Hi and welcome to my latest video where I will be briefly discussing paired t-tests also known as dependent samples t-tests. So moving on to the introduction a paired or dependent samples t-test <clears throat> is used to compare two samples or population which is rare unless you have the entire cohort of population means by which you have two samples in which observations in one sample can be paired with observations in the other sample. So these two variables or rows of data, columns of data rather, are very much linked between the same participant doing the same type of intervention or same test twice. So you want to see kind of a before and after effect. And so some examples of where one might use a dependent samples t-test is, as I mentioned, before and after observations on the same subjects. For instance, um, a student's diagnostic test results before and after a particular module or course. So whether they actually improved significantly or there was no significant or statistically significant difference between results of the before and after intervention. Another example is a comparison of two different methods of measurement or two different treatments where the measurements or treatments are applied to the same subjects for example measuring blood pressures measuring blood pressure using a stethoscope or a dynamap and to see whether there is a difference between those two types of measures so I'm just going over um, the assumptions of the independent samples I mean sorry the dependent samples t-test the first assumption is that your dependent variable should be measured on a continuous scale, i.e. not categorical. So assumption two, your independent variable should consist of two categorical or related groups or matched pairs. So the related groups indicate that the same subjects are present in both groups. The reason that it's possible to have the same subject in each group is because each subject has been measured on two occasions on the same dependent variable. Assumption three, there should be no significant outliers in the differences between the two related groups and this assumption is valid for a lot of statistical tests. Outliers are simply single points of data within your, da within your data set that do, not allow to, that do not follow the usual pattern. The problem with outliers is that they can have a negative effect on the dependent t-test, reducing the validity of your results as well as the statistical significance of the test. Fortunately, when using SPSS statistics to run a dependent t-test on your data, you can easily detect the possible outliers by having a look at the descriptive section of the output, which I will be discussing when we get to it. And lastly, assumption 4, the distribution of the groups um, and the dependent variable between the two related groups should be approximately normally distributed. And this goes back to assumption 3, where you cannot have any outliers which significantly influence the data. So I'm just going to be using a very simple example data set. So it's very simple. We have 15 participants and let's just say that they were doing a test in biology. Or well, let's make it statistics. They're doing a statistics test. And they did a test before an intervention and they did a test after an intervention. And while we can't really control for extraneous variables, it gives us an idea of what this the dependent samples t-test is used for. So before the intervention you can see that the, the marks were quite low generally except for an outlier of 12 which is 81 and generally the marks are a bit higher after the intervention so just looking at the data we can see that marks did seem to increase but we need to statistically test this difference to see if it's significant. So when we take our data and we insert it into SPSS, okay, so once we enter the data into SPSS, it should look something like this. Each um, variable or paired part of the dependent sample t-test would have its own column, which is a bit different to the independent samples t-test where you have to have a single column with another column differentiating the groups. But in this, in this type of test, we can have two separate columns. Well, we actually have to have two separate columns. There's no consideration of a single column. And we don't really have to have our participant numbers or participant IDs there, but it's just useful to differentiate 
between the different scores and which participant scored which score and so on. But to get to the crux of the test, we go to Analyze, Compare Means, and a Paired Sample T-Test. Oh, sorry. This was before I tested it. So you want to have the first type of the before variable in the first column. So we put the before score. And then we want the after intervention or like the after score next to it. So we have variable one before and variable two after. The option section, it just the only option you have is to just change the confidence interval percentage. And it's either 90, 95, or 99, but generally one calculates the 95% confidence interval. And I don't have any missing values, but if you did, then you would need to determine whether you want to exclude case analysis by analysis, cases analysis by analysis, or exclude, exclude cases list-wise. And I think the, the default would suffice for missing data as long as it's coded in the variable view section. And then, <clears throat> then once you've entered your data, you simply click OK. And it gives us an output, which we will discuss now. So the first the first section is basically a, a descriptive statistics of the different means and standard deviations. And just by looking at this, we can see that there's quite a substantial difference between the before score mean, which is 41, and the after score mean, which is approximately 65. So just looking at that, we can see that there's quite a big difference. And then the paired samples correlation, the, it's not really important here, but just discussing it, it shows you the correlation between those two variables. And there really isn't any type of correlation. So it is basically one, which is absolutely no difference occurring by chance. So then we move on to our the main output of this test, which is the paired sample t-test. And a thing to note, because the data is paired, the total n of the paired samples would be 15 and not 30, because those pairs count as one point of data, which makes sense if you think about it. Yeah, we can see that the mean difference between these two groups is 23.4 which out of a total of 100 is quite a lot, with the standard deviation being 29.25 and the standard error of mean being 7.55. And then we move on to our confidence intervals, which you can change according to your preference. This is the default 95% confidence interval. And we have an overall t-score of negative 3.098, which as you can see is quite significant at 0 0.008. So, Overall, we can see, after conducting this test, that there is a statistically significant difference between the students or the scores before the intervention compared to after the intervention. And that is pretty much the total use and the total output of a, a independent or in a dependent or paired sample t-test. And if this video was useful, please like and subscribe.